Hi everyone and welcome back to NodeFlow. I am Mario and today we're kicking off a brand new series on particle simulations in Houdini. My goal is simple, to build the clearest, most complete pop tutorial series entirely for free. In this first video, we'll answer a fundamental question. What is a particle simulation? Then we'll build a simple setup with curl noise and learn how to visualize the key attributes behind every particle sim. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. So here we are in Udini, and the fastest way to see particles in action is through the shelf tools. These are great for quick visual feedback and understanding the basics. Let's start with Fireworks tool. Go into the Particles tab and choose Fireworks. Once I click it, I need to select an origin for my Fireworks. What I tend to do is just hold X to enable the snapping option and I want to snap to the grid. Now I can just go to the middle of the world and press again to confirm. Now you will see that if you press play, you have already your simulation working and these are just some simple fireworks. So there are other chef tools that are actually very useful. So let me go out here. I will delete my fireworks for now and I will choose the second one, location particle emitter. This tool actually allows me to specify one point as before. And now this would be the origin of my particles. You can see it's so fast that I can also just move it in the viewport. Next, let's try the source particle emitters. In this case, you see that if I click it, it's asking me for the geometry. So I will simply create a torus press enter to confirm. And now if I select my torus over here and press enter again, now my torus has been set as my initial emitter. And if I press play, I will see the same result as before, but in this case, it's not starting from one single point, but it's instead starting from a mesh. So definitely these tools are excellent for quick explorations, but to truly really understand and control particle behavior, we need to build our custom networks. So I can just delete my nodes and let's now create a simple custom simulation from scratch. So I will start from a geometry node. I can go inside and create a sphere. This would be our emitter. I will now drop a pop network and I will connect my sphere to the first input. This pop net is a container for our simulation and has been specifically designed for particles. That's why it's called pop short for particle operator with operator being a more technical term for node. If we visualize it and go inside, at the first glance, the pop network can seem overwhelming, but it really comes down to three main nodes, the pop object, the pop source, and the pop solver. And I will guide you through each one of them to make sure you understand how particle simulations work. Notice how the timeline turns blue when you play the sim. That means Houdini is caching frames into RAM to make playback smoother. If you make a change, the timeline switches to orange, indicating that the cached frames are outdated. And to update, you will need to go back to frame one and play simulation again. In this case, of course, I need to reconnect my pop object and I can press play again. So the pop object is the particle container. It holds all the emitted particles and defines global settings and parameters to allow the simulation to work correctly. Then we have the pop source. This is where particles are born. So this node takes a geometry from outside. In this case, it's taking our sphere and creates a particle simulation based on that. If you check in the source tab, we are using the first contest geometry. So it's reading our first input connected over here. If we create, for instance, a cube and we connect it to the second input, switch to the second contest, you'll see that my emitter is a cube and I can press play and I can see it's still working. In case you want to reference an external geometry that is not connected to the pop net, you can just go here and choose parameter values. In this way, you can choose which geometry should be your emitter. We can even choose to emit from different sources. So I can just duplicate this one and now this one will read my cube. And I can connect both of them into this merge. And as you can see now, I have two different emitters for my particles. So the reason why our particles are just spawning, but they are not really moving, is because we don't have one of the most important attributes in pop simulations, and that's velocity. To fix it, we can go into the pop source and in the attributes tab, set initial velocity. And I will see that if I set a velocity of one, in the y-axis, my particles will start moving up. There is an easiest way to do that, and that's a trick I learned using Houdini for a while. You can just drag and drop this velocity attribute in the viewport, choose pivot handle. You see, once I move this one, these values will change, and I will be able to set my velocity in a very natural way. Now you can see if I press play, particles are going towards that handle. So a small trick I hope you will find useful. Now, if you go to the birth tab, you will notice that you have a life expectancy. So 100 seconds, it's a lot. Just to give you an idea, if I set it to 2, after 2 seconds, all the particles that have spawned will die. And 2 seconds is still a lot, but you can see it's working. But you see how they all disappear in a way that it's very boring. 
So what I tend to do is just to add some life variants. If I add 0.5, some of them will be disappearing after 1.5 seconds and other ones disappear after 2.5. And with a little bit more variance, the decay of the particles looks a little bit more interesting. So the last one we need to check is actually our solver. Observer is the brain of our simulation, as we can see from the icon over here. It updates the particles every frame. If I go out and I create a null, connect it and call it out particles, you can see that now when I press play, these are all the attributes of every single particle changing. So the responsible of this change over time is our solver. And that's why it's considered the brain of our setup. The solver, of course, is also able to calculate collisions and forces, and we'll explore this in detail throughout this series. So I'm on the mission to make the most comprehensive pop tutorial series out there. So if you're enjoying the video, drop a like and subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind. Let's keep going. Now let's make something a little bit more interesting. I will delete my cube, and because I would like to define my velocities outside the dop net, I will go inside into my pop source and I will just remove the initial velocity. So I will set it back to use inherited velocity. Now my particles will be still and I can go out. Then we'll create a node called point velocity. And the great thing about this one is that we can actually initialize it as a noise. So you see if you go here on curl noise and click on add curl noise, you can now press play and you will see a different behavior. Because it's too strong, I will change the scale to something like 0.3 and I will reduce the grain to 0.3. Now if I go back to the first frame to reset and press play, I will be seeing a more interesting result. So to visualize the velocities, we have a little button over here that says display point trails. You see we have all these blue vector trails that basically indicates the direction of our particle. In case you want to start your emission from some points, I like to create a points from volume and because the distribution is too perfect inside, I always like to add a little bit of jitter scale. We can now do exactly the same thing, so we can plug it back to the point velocity, go back to the first frame, and you'll see that nothing happens. And that's because we have changed the type of emitter. Now we don't have any surface, and we have to specify that we want to emit particles from points. So let's go into the dotnet in the pop source, where it says source, you see it's looking for a surface, I want to emit from all points. Now we go back to the first frame, press play, and you will see everything is working as it should. Now I usually find this result a little bit more appealing, so for now I will stick to it. In the end, everything in a particle simulation comes down to attributes. The solver reads these values and updates them each frame. So because attributes are so important, I would like to show them to you in a clear and easy way. I will disable my velocity trail and after my null, I will create an attribute adjust color. I want a pattern type to be remap attribute and here I can choose my attribute. Let's start with V, velocity. I will click on compute range, pressing play and you'll see that the particles that have a higher velocity value will be red. The particles that actually are slower, they will be purple. Don't forget that you can manually change the range and now we have just the first part of the values and you have also different ways of visualizing particles, also disks, although it will be very hard to understand what's going on. So just for you to know, maybe you are experimenting with it and you want to see that in a different way. Another fun attribute that we can check is the age. I will just change the color ramp to a simple grayscale. You see, when the particles are young, they tend to be black because the age is zero. But when they go toward dying, they will get bright white. So the age represents the cycle of life of the particle itself. And I guess that was a visual way to visualize two of the most important attributes in pop simulations. So have fun with this setup. Explore using different geometry, changing the noise parameters, adding a different color based on attributes, and changing the range in a way that you will find more pleasing. So overall, I really think particles are very fun and they don't necessarily need to be complex. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the tutorial, leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you as usual next week with a new tutorial and a new challenge. Have a nice one. Bye.